Okay, thank you all for being here. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for joining us as well. As many of you know, last night two of our officers were tragically shot during a proactive police stop, and I'm going to let the chief update you on the details of the criminal activity and the great police work that was done in apprehending the um, perpetrators. And I also want to thank the many other law enforcement agencies that assisted OPD during the evening. Um, I'm going to let uh, the doctors talk about the conditions of the officers to the extent they can. Um, but to those officers and their families who I had the opportunity to meet with earlier today, I want to thank them for their service and their dedication to our city. They put their lives on the line every single day to keep our community safe. And I also want to thank the doctors and the nurses here at Orlando Health and all those who quickly responded and provided essential care to the officers at this critical time. So our entire community's thoughts and prayers remain with those courageous officers, their families, and our entire OPD during this difficult time. And now I'd like to call on Chief Smith to uh, update you more on the details of the events from last night. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for being here. It has been a very long night. Our officers have faced danger throughout the night, trying to life locate the suspect after two of our own were critically injured. Just a reminder, the officers' identities are protected by Marcy's law. After an extensive search, officers were able to find the suspect at the Holiday Inn in the 5900 block of Caravan Court. The SWAT team responded to the hotel at 6 a.m. and was able to safely evacuate the hotel. The suspect barricaded himself in a room. Several attempts to get the suspect to surrender were made and refused to give up. At 8.58, the suspect shot at our SWAT officers multiple times. SWAT officers returned fire, striking the suspect. The suspect is now deceased. The suspect has been identified as 28-year-old Dayton Bale, who has extensive violent criminal history. The second suspect was determined to not be involved in the shooting. We did locate him. I'd like to thank Orlando Health and all the law enforcement agencies who have helped us throughout the night. I also want to thank everyone from our community who has been sharing information and support for our department. Our officers are lucky to be alive, and we ask that you continue to pray for them. I will now turn it over to Orlando Health. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we exist for exactly this situation. Uh, we are the only level one trauma center in Central Florida uh, for both adults and for children. Uh, we stand ready at any time, 24-7, just for an event such as this. Uh, we see events like this on a daily basis where our citizens are injured or become sick. Uh, it's, it's a night like last night that is a real privilege for us at Orlando Health to be able to take care of those that protect us as citizens of Orlando every day. Uh, as you've heard, we had two officers brought to us uh, about 11 o'clock last night. Uh, I can't go into the details to protect their privacy other than to tell you that both officers are with us. They're with their families. Uh, we've been taking care of them during the night, uh, and we expect them to, to fully recover from their injuries that they sustained in the line of duty. Uh, it is a privilege for Orlando Health to be able to serve the community, and we, we look forward to being here and being able to do that in the future. Thank you. Now we'll take any questions. Chief, you mentioned one, a second suspect was not involved. So know that this is a one defendant, one suspect matter in your eyes? Yes. Can you walk us roughly through the timeline? I know overnight we had multiple scenes in Apopka, I think, out in East Orange County. Can you kind of walk us through as best you can everything that happened with this? I can. Some of it, some of the parts of the uh, active investigation, of course. <laughs> so basically, like I said before, the officers approached the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, the person was outside of the vehicle, and basically the car was basically wanted for uh, as a suspect in a homicide out of Miami. And then the shooting occurred. The two officers were shot. Officers were right there, other officers were right there, a vehicle pursuit ensued. It went up to some different areas. Um, it went up to Apopka. It went up to another couple of different uh, areas. As you know, we were doing a lot of things in Apopka. And basically through our investigation, it came back to the hotel uh, over in uh, Caravan Court, the Holiday Inn, and that's where we found him. 
be able to say how you pinpointed him at the Holiday Inn? That's uh, part of the investigation. Was there a carjacking involved here, and how did that all play out? Yes, that's one thing I mentioned last night, but I forgot to mention just now. So basically, after the shooting occurred, he did do a carjacking. We had a victim of the carjacking. So that was the vehicle that basically we were in vehicle pursuit of, was the vehicle he carjacked right after he shot the officers. Carjacking victim uninjured? Uninjured, yes. And the car that was recovered at the, in Apopka, was that the carjacking victim's car? Yes. Right. So how did he get from the suspect there from there to... Uh, to the hotel, did they car grab another car? No, that's part of the investigation, but we did, he didn't do any more crimes as far as finding another car, but that, who actually put him there is a part of the investigation. The second person who was caught with the suspect, um, was that person willingly going along with them? Were they like a hostage? Were they just, how did that? No, not a hostage, just some, a minor offense that basically put him in contact with that person, but that's a part of the investigation. But they were traveling together? No, he's someone he came in contact with at the scene of the shooting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Although you can't release a lot of details of the investigation, anything you want to tell the community about, about what your officers did or the teams that came in from other jurisdictions to, to make this happen, happen so safely and, and, and resolve quickly? So I want to thank all the other agencies who came and assisted us. All the local agencies, most of them you know, that came and assisted us, but also the federal, our federal partners. Our federal partners did a great job, and they always help us. They're always there to assist us. As far as our department goes, um, our far department really came together. This is a tragedy for our department getting any time to get officers shot. These officers are out here every day protecting our community. They put their lives on, the, on their line every day to keep us safe. And for some piece of crap to do this to them because they don't, they don't want to go back to prison is ridiculous. And we're not going to put up with it. We're going to stay out there fighting crime and keeping our community safe. That's our job. That's why we're here. That's why every one of our officers put their lives on the line. They're here to protect us, and they do it every day. We're going to release the criminal history. After. Yeah. Yes, Dayton Bale. Yes. Yeah. And you're all going to get a copy of the criminal history. Any other questions? I'm not sure if that's it is criminal history. You may have to reach out to them. Okay. Yeah. They're the ones who put, put the one out for the vehicle, but it, I don't think it's going to be a part of the criminal history. Okay. Anybody else you're searching for at this point? No. The community is safe, and we're, we've done what we needed to do. Is there anything that you can tell us or want to tell us about uh, any like the, the tips that you got, the community support in tying this together? We want to thank the community because, as always, we get a lot of calls. There were people right there who saw this happen and said, hey, that person just shot an officer. You know, there he goes. And that, that goes a long way. So there's a lot of communities. People don't do that. People don't care. Our community cares. And they told us they were, like, right there. You know, I was right at the downtown office. Like most of you guys know, we came running out of there. And people were like, there he goes. He's right there. And we all did what we needed to do. Is anybody being investigated for harboring the suspect or anything? That's a part of the investigation. Okay, two, more two more questions. questions. What agencies were involved in this? Uh, pretty much all of them. You can ATF, FBI, DEA. I mean, everybody. All the federal agencies were there. They all assist us. And then all the local agencies, like I said, we went to Apopka. That incorporates Orange County. You know, Volusia County came over and helped us. Um, Osceola County helped us. So I don't want to miss somebody, but pretty much all the counties. We'll, we'll have a list for you, but pretty much anybody you can imagine, anywhere we went, all the agencies were partners, were brothers, and they all sisters, and they all came to assist us. Can you comment on the risk, or how would you assess the risk to the people in the hotel while he was pulled up there and while this was all going on? There is risk, but I will say this. Our SWAT team did a great job. You know, I went out there, and we evacuated everybody who was in there. We basically called everybody down from the, to the lobby, put them in a safe environment, and then the ones that didn't answer, of course, we went and knocked on their doors. We made sure it was safe before we took action. That's our biggest thing. It doesn't benefit us to hurt somebody else while we're trying to, to capture someone like this. We, time's on our side. We evacuated the hotel. Then did what we have to do. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.